Hello guys, I hope you are having a wonderful year. As for me, I am doing great. I finally have a gaming PC and I have started playing some games. Actually, that is the very reason why this video is so late because I have been keep playing games that I played last year but now I get to experience them in the highest graphics settings. So, without further ado, here are the three games that I would recommend that I played in 2021. Before I start talking about how awesome this game is, I would like to share my experience with roguelike games before playing Hades and why this game meant so much to me. For those who don't know, roguelike is a subgenre of role playing games where the levels are procedurally generated, meaning the map layout would be different each time and most importantly, you have permanent death system. So if you die in any level, you will lose all your progress along with all collectibles, which would include all the health and skill upgrades. And in your next attempt, you'll have to start from the beginning without those upgrades. The roguelike game that I played in 2020 was Enter the Gungeon, which was too difficult for me. And after being unable to make progress in the game, I lost my interest in roguelike genre. In early 2021, I picked up Spelunky 2. I had heard the previous Spelunky game was great and with its cute art style, I thought this game can't be that hard. Little did I know that this game would crush my gaming spirit. This is a platformer game that punishes you harshly for making mistakes. I died so many times because I missed the platform by a little bit. And sometimes stuff like this happened which were out of control. I don't want to shame this game because genuinely I had fun. But having died around 840 times in just 37 hours with an experience like that, I believe that roguelike games were not meant for me. All of that changed when I started playing Hades. Hades is an isometric style action roguelike game where you play as Zagreus who is trying to escape from the underworld. During his escape, Zagreus gets aided by the Olympian gods in the form of boons. These boons will modify your playstyle. Boons by Zeus emits lightning from your attack. Boons by Demeter causes enemies to slow down, while Athena gives you ability to deflect enemies' attacks, and so on. The combat in the game is fast-paced, responsive, and well-built. You can easily telegraph the enemy's attack, and all the enemies you face show you the attack pattern of the boss that you would face in the end. So the game is cleverly training you for the boss fight. Also, the enemies would start to vary as we progress from biome to biome. There are only four biomes in this game, and all of them are easy distinguishable from the others. Sometimes I would just stop to enjoy the visual of the game because they are so goddamn gorgeous and pleasing for the eyes. The attention to detail in every frame, big or small, is impressive. Now combine this with sounds, music and the voice acting, you are in for the true audio-visual dream. What hope can you possibly have for what lies ahead? Go home, Zagreus. Oh no! Since this is a roguelike, it would mean that you would die and lose all your progress. This is heartbreaking because you failed and lost everything. Now, you need to start from the very beginning. And Hades would add salt to your wounds and disgrace you even further. How did you die ignobly this time, pray tell? Cerberus and I can't wait to hear the tale. But there are NPCs like Achilles, Nex, and Skelly who would cheer and motivate you into trying one more time. Getting a while out there, boyo? Hey, I know the feeling. You just keep at it though. You're getting tougher, getting smarter. Between the two of those, I'm thinking you'll pull through soon enough here. Appreciate it, Skelly. You can also pet Cerberus, which helps to brighten the mood. You don't like it when I pet your other heads, huh? No. I have learned so much from this game. How to play roguelike games, how to strategize and power ups. But the most important lesson that I learned was you need to keep motivating yourself to get up after failing again and again until you succeed. Sloppy of me. In fact, there is a quest to teach you this very lesson where Zagreus must learn how to play music. The first few attempts are not even close to thing. any decent music. As you continue to practice to play the liar, your efforts will start to show some progress. After you have practiced enough, you will see your result. Had I not played Hades, I would have given up on the roguelike genre. 
I have tried other roguelike games like Dead Cells, Downwell and enjoyed them. I am grateful to Hades for that. If you haven't played Hades or haven't tried any of the roguelike games, I would highly recommend you that you give this game a try. Splitgate is fast-paced multiplayer shooter with player-controlled portals. Portals can be opened at these predetermined blue surfaces which are scattered all over the map. Each player can open a pair of portals which can be used to navigate through the map, run away from fights which I do a lot or can be used offensively to shoot your enemies. You have to get creative here because like you, the enemies can shoot through your portals you can also use your portals to throw the enemies off the map. It's tough but incredibly satisfying when you pull it off. Apart from portals, you can use sprint and use jetpack and fly for few seconds. And when you combine all these things, you can get high mobility in the game. There are many game modes in this game. You have your usual deathmatch games. Then you have modes like Big Head Sniper where your head is bigger than usual and you are allowed to use sniper only. Then you have Team Swat where headshots are instant kills. This one is my favorite. You also have time limited game mode which refreshes every day. You have speed bat where you can sprint like a madman with a melee weapon and are not allowed to use portals. There's also T-Pack mode. I don't need to explain this one. All these game modes can be played in all maps. However, not all maps are enjoyable. Forgone Destruction is a map I hate because there are very limited locations where you can open your portals. So a lot of time you will be sprinting instead of using portals for mobility. Then there is Carmen Station. I played on this map once or twice when I had started playing Splitgate. Since then, this map hasn't showed up in any map selection pool. At the time of recording this video, season 1 had just started and I would love to see the map changes and game modes in season 1 since I had so much fun in the previous season. I loved this game because it brought back my love for multiplayer shooting genre. It reminded me of times when I used to play custom maps on Counter Strike with maps being majorly open and having perks like speed boost or double jumps gave the mobility that the game was lacking. Splitgate is free to play. I would highly recommend you give this game a try. I should warn you though that this game is currently in beta phase so you can run into some issues but to be honest I haven't experienced any bugs in my 90 hours playtime. Sable is a game of coming of age where our protagonist, a girl named Sable, must set out for her own adventure and should discover her passion. Before the adventure starts, Sable must find bike parts and assemble them to construct her bike. The bike would be her companion for the adventure, an adventure which only she can take. The game takes place in a desert planet which seemed to have some leftovers of ancient technology and on few sides it has gigantic bones of long extinct creatures giving this planet an air of mystery. The game also has a day and night cycle where colors are saturated in daylight and colors desaturate during night. If I was to arrive at some place at night, I would sit down and wait for the sunrise because I knew the view would be worth waiting. While you are exploring the world on your bike, you would run across many people on this planet wear masks all the time and these masks represent their profession, their identity. So while you are exploring the world, you also need to collect the badges. Once three badges of a kind are collected, they can be brought to the mask caster who crafts them into a mask. Some of the badges can be bought while others are rewarded after completing the quest. I had fun completing the quest and having played the whole game, I'll highly recommend this game. Just remember, there are minor bugs here in there. I felt the game to my core at the very end. If you haven't played Sable, it would be a spoiler for you. I really hope that you experience this yourself firsthand. And this is the last game I'm going to talk about, so feel free to close this video. If you're still continuing, then I hope you have finished the game. So here it goes. In the end, when Sable returned from her adventure, she must go to the temple and select her mask. Before she goes, she says farewell to her bike, her companion. The companion that has been all along with her during the entire journey. 
From this point onwards, she will neither see her bike again nor be able to glide. This hit me hard because I'm also at a similar state. This YouTube gaming drawing is my companion. A companion that I would need to say goodbye someday and must put a professional mask and bear my responsibilities. So that was a wrap up for the games that I played last year which left some impression on me. Sorry, this video took too much time because in a lot of scenarios I had to replay some of the games. Hope to see you in next video.